A quadratic equation is an equation where the highest power on the variable is 2. A quadratic equation will have two solutions. And a quadratic equation, such as x squared plus 10x minus 24 equals 0, can be solved in three ways. Factoring, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. In this video, I will solve the equation x squared plus 10x minus 24 equals 0 using all three of these methods and describe the process for using each method as I do. Let's begin. The first way that I will solve x squared plus 10x minus 24 equals 0 is with a factoring method. Now it should be noted that not all quadratic expressions can be factored. This one can. x squared plus 10x minus 24 can be factored, but in fact most quadratic expressions cannot be factored. If I chose random numbers for the coefficients in this expression, it would be very likely that, that, that the resulting quadratic would not be able to factor. So not all quadratics can factor, but if they can, factoring is a fairly simple way to solve the quadratic equation. The way that I'm going to, solve, to factor this quadratic is begin by making two sets of parentheses that will represent two binomials multiplied together. And when I multiply these two binomials together, the result should be x squared plus 10x minus 24. The easiest thing to write down in this factorization are the first terms in each binomial because the only two factors that, when multiplied together, result in x squared are x and x. The remaining term in each binomial, because the coefficient on x squared is only 1, the remaining terms will be two numbers that have a product of negative 24 and a sum of positive 10. Think about the factors of 24, 1, 24, 2, and 12, 3, and 8, 4, and 6. One of those pairs of factors has a sum of 10. Because the product has to be negative 24, one of the factors must be positive, one must be negative. And again, between those four pairs of factors, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 6 and 4, the only pair that can be arranged to have a sum of positive 10 are the factors of positive 12 and negative 2. I know that this is the correct factorization because x times x is x squared. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24 for the last term. And then the middle term will come from x times negative 2, negative 2x, and 12 times x, positive 12x, negative 2x plus 12x is the positive 10x. These two binomials have a product of x squared plus 10x minus 24. The factorization is correct. Next, I will set each factor equal to 0. When I set x plus 12 equal to 0 and x minus 2 equal to 0, I find that x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. x equals negative 12, I should say, x equals negative 12, and x equals positive 2. Those, the two solutions to the individual factors, are the two solutions to the quadratic equation. x squared plus 10x minus 24 has, equals 0 has solutions of negative 12 and 2. We already know that the solution to this equation is negative 12 and 2. Now we will use a second method, completing the square, to find that solution. Unlike factoring, completing the square can be used to solve any quadratic equation. Completing the square is a little more involved. I will break it down into steps. The first step being to make sure the coefficient on the square term is 1. In this quadratic equation, the coefficient on x squared is 1. There's not a number written in front of the x squared, so it's understood to be 1. If there was a coefficient of 2 on the x squared term, I would divide every term on both sides of the equation by 2 so that I would rewrite it in an equivalent form where the coefficient on the squared term is 1. 
The second step I will need to do, and that is isolate the constant. In this case, the quadratic's constant is negative 24. I will add 24 to both sides of the equation, rewrite it as x squared plus 10x equals 24. Step two is done. The constant is isolated. Step three. This is the big step. This is the step where we do what is called complete the square. It says add the square of half the linear coefficient to both sides of the equation. The linear coefficient is the number in front of the x to the first term. The linear coefficient is 10 in this problem. What we're going to add to both sides of the equation is the square of half of 10. Do half of 10 first, 5, square it to get 25, and that's the number that completes the square. That's the number that you add to both sides of the equation. x squared plus 10x now plus 25. Don't forget to add 25 on the other side of the equation as well. That takes you to step four, factor. What I'm going to do is factor the left side of this equation. x squared plus 10x plus 25 will always factor. And if you do step three correct, it will factor to a perfect square. It will factor to a quantity squared, x plus five squared. And you can use the factoring method that I described in method one, or when you complete the square, it's always going to be x plus the square root of the constant that you've added to both sides of the equation. The square root of 25 is five. x squared plus 10x plus 25 factors to x plus five times x plus five. It factors to x plus five squared. The other thing that I've done in this step is I've added 24 and 25 to get 49. On to step five, which is to take the square root of both sides of the equation. When you introduce a square root into both sides of the equation, don't forget to add to include a plus or minus in front of the square root of the constant, which in this case is 49. The square root of x plus five squared now, as I begin to solve this equation, is just x plus five. A square root and a square are inverse operations. They undo each other. And the square root of 49 is seven. That means that x plus five equals plus or minus seven. I can solve this equation by subtracting five from both sides of the equation. That means that x equals plus or minus seven minus five, or the way that I have it on the screen, negative five plus seven, or negative five minus seven. The result of these two small equations are the answers, the solutions, the roots to the original equation, negative 12 and two. Negative five plus seven is two, negative five minus seven is negative 12. We've arrived at the same solution that we did using the factoring method, but this is the completing the square method. Like the completing the square method, the quadratic formula can be used to solve any quadratic equation. The quadratic formula is derived by completing the square, and it is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. a is the coefficient on x squared, b is the linear coefficient, the coefficient on x, and c is the constant in the quadratic. Substituting a, b, and c into the quadratic formula will give you the two answers to any quadratic equation. In this equation, a is one, b is 10, and c is negative 24. The signs, of course, are very important. Substituting one for a, 10 for b, and negative 24 for c should, will, give us the solutions to this quadratic, which we know to be negative 12 and two. Let's go through the process of doing so. Again, a is one, b is 10, c is negative 24. Let's substitute those values into the quadratic formula. Negative b, negative 10, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 10 squared, minus four ac, minus four times one times c is negative 24 all over 2a, a is one, all over two times one. Under the radical, we have 10 squared minus four times one times negative 24, 10 squared is 100, four times one times negative 24 is negative 96, 
So this is 100 minus negative 96, which is the same thing as 100 plus 96, 196. Negative 10 plus the square root of 196 is a solution over 2, and negative 10 minus the square root of 196 over 2 is a solution. The square root of 196 is exactly 14. So our two solutions are negative 10 plus 14 over 2 and negative 10 minus 14 over 2. The results, the solution to those two expressions are negative 12 and 2, as we knew they would be, based on the results from solving this equation by factoring and completing the square. You can see the description of this in this video. In the description for this video, you can see some more resources for solving quadratic equations. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something.